Masataka Yoshida's deal with the Boston Red Sox is for 90 million with a posting fee of 15.4 mil. The total cost of the five year deal, 105.4 million. Uh, so uh, welcome inside the Manchester Grand Hyatt and say hello to Tom Verducci and Steve Phillips. This guy's been working hard all week. Uh, I'm Fran Charles. And Steve, let, let me go to you first here. So the Red Sox, we're going to talk about Kenley Jansen coming up in just a little bit. They added him. But uh, now they're grabbing one of the, the premier outfielders who was available. Yeah, it's really interesting. A little bit surprising. I mean, remember, he was just posted today. And he's already making a deal. I think he thought he had 45 minutes, not 45 <laughs> days to make a deal. Like, what happened here all of a sudden? But the Red Sox got in quick. They made a deal. And, and ultimately, they land a guy who's been a really good hitter in Japan. He's hit for average. A hit last year, hit, what, 335? A 447 on base percentage. He has a great plate discipline. The ability to recognize ball from strike, fastball from breaking ball. 88 walks this year. 82 walks, 42 strikeouts were the numbers he had this past year. Puts the ball in play. No swing and miss, a lot of contact, and so it makes sense. So you think to yourself, well, he compares to whom over here? Maybe an Andrew Benatendi, okay. awesome. maybe a Brandon Nimmo. Now, he doesn't have a lot of power, uh, does Yoshida, nor does he have a lot of speed. So he's going to have it for an eye average, have to have a high on base percentage to really justify the value. And then he's more of a left fielder than he is a center fielder. Arm strength, a little bit of a question mark. They're betting on the bat. And they're betting a lot on the bat. I mean, a lot of confidence. He's had great numbers and success over there. The question is, will it translate here? Yeah, it's interesting. You, you point out the walks and strikeouts. When you have twice as many walks and strikeouts, it tells you he's got special bat-to-ball skills, no question about it. Um, you know, listen, he's a left-handed hitter without premier power in Fenway Park, so he's going to have to be high on base percentage, high batting average, not through the slug department. I agree with you. Uh, Yoshida in Fenway Park is probably more of a left fielder. Putting Verdugo over in right field. There's not a ton of a slog in the Boston outfield. It's sort of unusual for traditional Red Sox teams, but you see the batting titles there. This guy can hit. There's no question about that. It's a matter of will he also hit for some extra bases in Fenway Park? We know it's a great hitting park. Wouldn't surprise me if he hits well over 300. That's where his value is going to come from. He's been kind of compared to a left-handed hitting Dustin Pedroia. Okay. Right? Not real big, five foot eight. Short arms, hard to have a long swing when you have short arms, right? So quick to the baseball, but he's not a guy. Now, listen, I mean, you think about it. Pedroia did have some pop in his oh, yeah. bat, but, you know, 21 home runs this year for Yoshida in Japan. You know, he's a guy that's going to hit for average and get on base and be a table setter, top of the lineup type guy. But, you know, how will he handle things here? Going to see different stuff, high fastballs overall, more heaters here than they, they see in Japan. More of a breaking ball league in Japan. So the question is, can he catch up to that high fastball? Yeah, Pedroia, obviously a former MVP, did great things in Boston. All right, uh, for more now here on Masataka Yoshida, let's welcome in uh, John Paul Morosi and JP. We'll, we'll get to Aaron Judge, and we'll give you your dap but coming up on breaking that news. But first here, uh, just your thoughts here on the Red Sox and the $90 million deal uh, for Yoshida. Fran, good evening. I actually spoke yesterday with the manager of Team Japan at the World Baseball Classic, Hideki Kuriyama, and Hideki Kuriyama told me that Yoshida is someone who has really good, as Steve said, bat to ball, who can hit for power, also for average, and very importantly, Kuriyama-san told me that he makes very good adjustments, and I think that's going to be the key thing coming over to Major League Baseball, the ability to adapt his game to the style of play that he sees here. His pedigree, Fran, is outstanding. He just won the Japan Series Championship with the Oryx Buffaloes, a member of Team Japan as well at the Olympics, so his high-level competition experience is excellent, 29 years old. He is in his prime. I love that Andrew Benintendi comparison that was made as well. I think he is going to be a star for the Boston Red Sox. He arrives with a lot of attention. When, when you win the Japan Series and win the, 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 bat, the batting title in Japan, you have come in there with a tremendous pedigree. I believe he's going to be able to make a huge impact there for the Red Sox in year one.